Wayne Rooney's Plymouth uh, showing up at Hillsborough but in the wrong end of a 4-0 result uh, Sheffield Wednesday winning by four goals to nil it begs a question is life going to get pretty tough is it going to be an uphill task for Wayne sooner uh, than he might have thought 4-0 defeat in the first day this was Wayne post-match we struggled really at the start of the game with the atmosphere really we found it difficult to get a foothold in the game but I think getting through the first 20 minutes was always important for us because we ex expected that but I think the basics of the game today was not acceptable. I think um, picking up second balls, not staying with runners. We knew um, Barry Bannon is a key player um, for Sheffield Wednesday and we didn't get close to him, especially second half. We didn't get close enough to him, um, so we ran the game really. Um, but the main threat which we identified before the game was crosses and, and cutbacks and I think it was four goals from, from cross and cutbacks. So, um, the base, basics of the game wasn't wasn't there today, and that's not acceptable. I think, um, of course, you can lose games of football, but I think not getting up to, up to second balls, not winning tackles, not being aggressive enough, wasn't there today. What does it tell you, Graham? I mean, um, if you're a Plymouth fan, should you be worried? Not doing the basics well, in your first game, it doesn't bode well, does it? You know, Wayne's. I don't know Wayne Rooney. I've met him and I've liked him when I've been in his company. Not at all as I would imagine him to be. Um, but he's gonna he's taking a job and he's under pressure before he even plays on at the weekend. He you know, his, his track record so far hasn't been good. I hope it works out for him, but he's, he's gonna find it difficult. Just one of the words there which I found coming from him strange, they couldn't deal with the atmosphere. You know, if Sheffield Wedding is a decent crowd, it's not exactly it's not going to play Turkey to play or some mm. Eastern European in the days gone by. Mm. Atmosphere at Sheffield Wedding is he hostile? Intimidate, intimidatory. Good crowd, though. I mean, yeah, but it doesn't. Them off don't get after you. So I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm looking at the things he said there, and then if Bannon's going to run the show like that, make it a ten against ten, man mark him. Yeah. Um, just things that would be easily sorted. I think if you're easily rectified. I mean, Simon, we, we, you and I spoke to the Plymouth owner Simon Hallett <laughs> yeah. when, it, when he appointed Wayne. Yes. And and you and and many others were were quite surprised at what Hallett said regarding the decision that led up to Wayne's appointment. This was him. We do think there's more to it. Um, clearly, results were poor, and results were particularly poor at Birmingham over the course of 15 games, which is probably not long enough to be st statistically significant. The underlying data at Birmingham was also poor, but we know that there were circumstances that made it difficult for, for Wayne. Um, there were also circumstances that made it difficult at Derby, most obviously that the place was in administration. You know, and Wayne ended up, I think, having to do more than just coach at Derby. So the, at Derby, though, he still managed to improve the defence at DC United. Again, limited uh, number of games, but DC United's attack was strengthened. DC United's defence was also more modestly, but, but strengthened. So he, you know, I, we believe anyway that you can't just look at results. You have to look at uh, the impact that a manager has on a team. So you have to look at it, you know, the, at the uh, data, the underlying performances before the manager arrives and afterwards. And, you know, that means looking at things other than just wins and losses. I mean, Simon... Well, you know my reaction at the time. I, I, I remember your reaction at the time. You couldn't believe what you were hearing. Well, I said it, I thought it was ridiculous. Because it's not a case of a small data set. It's 150 games. Wayne has managed 150 games. And um, and all of every single managerial role will involve nuance. But at the end of it, you do have to take some of the consideration to be what you've achieved. And yeah. to suggest that the, the, the Plymouth owner was saying that it wasn't a factor, I found ridiculous and said it to him. Now, moving on to Wayne, look, he is right. Derby was a difficult job. It was a baptism of fire because he didn't have the security of a club that was stable. Mel Morris had done what he'd done. Derby was an administration. But sometimes, but, in those circumstances, but, no choice is the but, best but choice. Simon, you get a job in management not because the club's doing well. Not granted, You walk in the door and but there are, the roof's caving But in fairness, and I don't like to give people this excuse, but just for the purposes of being balanced in my observations, this was not the ideal first management job for a guy to walk into a football club as an administration. An owner that has ultimately caught himself on fire in terms of economically, and the club is having to fire sell players out. <clears throat> There's also other things going on behind the scenes. I think Liam Rossini was a major part of the intellectual capital that Derby were able to pull upon, so I don't give Wayne as much credit as people would like to give him on that respect. DC United and what? A 26% win record. And at Birmingham, it was a car crash. It was a car crash because Wayne adopted a philosophy of playing in a certain way yeah. that clearly the players couldn't play. He took a side that was sixth in the league to ultimately a side that, that was in real trouble and Gary Rowett couldn't say. His chairman said that they've got to finish fifth and bottom. <laughs> so his benchmark has already been set in terms of what his objective is to be able to stay in the division as their primary focus. 
Um, and that's what their chairman said last time. Around. A little bit better than we did last time. You know, maybe fifth and bottom. OK, wonderful. There's your benchmark, Wayne. There's an ambitious chairman to work for. Um, but also, also... <laughs> I what think, would you be saying? I mean, would you be saying... We, we, get out of that bleeding league, is what I'd be saying. I'm bringing you in to build some success. And I want you to do it as quickly as you possibly can. But I'm going to be realistic alongside you. I wouldn't make statements like that, because that gives the manager a pass from the get-go. But also, you've got to look at... In fairness to Wayne, I'm very critical of Wayne. I'm critical of some of the things that he has said in the past and some of the things that he has done. I'd like to see him in a slightly better physical condition, but that's a different discussion. He's come into a, a club that's not... That's taken 15 points from 15 games. These aren't ones. He isn't Harry Potter. He isn't going to turn it around instantaneously. Sheffield Wednesday got bags of momentum, full of confidence, and probably a full house in the opening game of the season. So I do feel, in this sense, instance that Rooney's got to be given a little bit of, of, of he's not going to be because it's Wayne Rooney he's not going to be given one scintilla of opportunity to correct this he's got difficult games coming up um, and I would like to see him judged over a period of maybe five or ten games before everyone starts piling in and even then it's a bit previous I mean Plymouth have taken as I say 15 points out of the last 15 games which means they don't win very much so it was not going to be this, and it was also with Sheffield Wednesday. It's not an easy first game. Let's see how they get on when they're playing at home. Let's see if Wayne has learnt from the mistakes that he made at Birmingham, evidently at Birmingham, because Birmingham was sixth in the league when he took over. Can't follow enough of what he did in DC United, but the statistics tell you a particular story, and I know the statistics are the beginning of a conversation. I'd like to see... Wayne be successful, despite my observations on him, despite my... Why would you like to see Wayne because be I successful? Think, because I think he's got balls. I don't balls. think Wayne would believe that. Because I think he's got balls. He doesn't... He's he keeps got keeps coming back for he's more. He's got bags of money. He doesn't need to be down in Plymouth, taking a job with a club like Plymouth Argyle, with all respect to Trevor East, who's a mate of ours, and people that I've known there that have been previously at that football club. It's a lovely football club, but Wayne really comes with a different sort of, of focus. So he's taking a job because he clearly wants to be a football manager, and you've got to admire that, because it's going to be for the money. But he's also got to be judged by a set of standards that everyone else is judged by, which is, this wasn't a great side. This was a side that finished fourth and bottom of the league last year. They're not suddenly going to pivot all of, all, all of a sudden overnight just because Wayne Rooney's been there for six weeks. And Simon said a moment ago, he won't be given time. He won't, well, five or ten games yeah sure but they get Hull next who knows that's the price on the ticket of being a manager today well he should be you know, given the spot, time the spotlight is on him because he's previous because he's of his not, previous he's not lived up to expectations As a pl- but it's, the reason why the spotlight on him is because it's Wayne Rooney it's stupid yeah. he's, he's, he's 38 years of age He's learning his trade at environments that have been remarkably difficult. He didn't get the Lampard opportunity. He didn't get the opportunity that Gerard got, which is going into moderately established football clubs. Derby at that time was going full guns with Mel Morris at the t- at the at the at the help. He got Derby in administration. He got DC United. He made these choices. So I do you want have to feel. You admire him because he keeps coming back. But that's more. the yeah. point, and yeah. that's why I want him to do but well. But you had an opportunity to tell him that when things weren't going well at Derby, and didn't take his call. Well, I also had an opportunity. Did um, you bottle it? I don't bottle it from anybody. It really, really no, got no, in I, touch with no, me. No. Well, tell me more, Annoyed Jim. At him because he Please says tell he, me more. He's got an agenda against no, him. No, I didn't. I didn't. So, so did. Rooney was going to call Simon. Simon was <laughs> going to take the call. Then mysteriously call. didn't take the call. Here's what happened. Oh, I, you really? Here's what happened. I got an excited little person at seven thirty in the morning in gym going. Wayne Rooney wants to speak to you. I said, Not true. And. And do you, want, do you want his number? No, I don't want his bleeding number. I don't want to call him. If he wants to call me, he can call me. He calls me. I missed the call. I call ah, him. Uh, hold on. Hold he on. He missed the hold call. On. Right. I, call. I call him back. How convenient. I call him back. He doesn't answer. Yeah. That's the end of the conversation. So he, then, he then goes on to be very aggressive with Jim. He then goes on to be very aggressive with Jim because he doesn't like being mm. criticised. Look and at that's me. Fine. Look at me. Hand and heart. Did you call him back? Absolutely. Absolutely. On, on my children's life. Jim. Absolutely. Oh, fair enough. Jim, Jim White. Simon Jordan Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM on DAB via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker TalkSport